Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mama's Time Out with Real Moms Come to Talk. I'm glad to have you listening today, and I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, for new li- new listeners, I'm Patty, owner of LittleBikesNews.com, GiftPartySpiesAndMore.com, Mama's Time Out.com, and the WHBusinessDirectory.com, where we offer shopping, child development, parenting resources, and low-cost advertising, party supplies, gift ideas, and our social network and life support call-in show for moms. Today's guest is, um, I'm actually very honored to have her back again, Stacey Tannenberg, who is um, also the owner of MomCentral.com and is a a, uh, well-known speaker and co-author of the book, Let's Get Ready for Kindergarten and First Grade series to help your children prepare for school. So I will have her on in just a minute. Let me find my switchboard here. <laughs> Where did it go? Too many windows open right now. Okay, there it is. So I think I see her on there. So um, I'll have her introduce herself and tell you a little bit more about her in just a minute. I also wanted to open some all these windows are open and I can't find what I'm looking for. Okay, uh, just to tell you just a little bit and go ahead and have her tell you some more about her and what she does and uh, the topic that she will be discussing today. I believe we um, cited on preparing the children for first grade and kindergarten, although she does speak on several other topics that moms would find very helpful. So if we get into any of that briefly, we'll go ahead and do that as well. Uh, so she's an author, publisher, motivator, and consultant, spokesperson, and mom, of course. And she's known as the Get Ready to Learn Mom. She's a nationally renowned education expert and award-winning author. And like I said, she co-wrote Let's Get Ready for Kindergarten and Let's Get Ready for First Grade. She's the founder and CEO of two publishing companies, Cedar Valley Publishing and Stacey Tannenberg Unlimited. So she's... Uh, accomplished quite a bit, and I definitely uh, look forward to uh, learning more from her and talking to Stacy. So let me get her on the line so everybody else can enjoy learning from her as well. So, hello, Stacy. Hey, Patty, how are you? Oh, doing good, trying to keep all my windows in the right places here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little confusing sometimes when I have all these uh, different windows open for different purposes. You have to have the switchboard. I don't know if you're familiar with Blog Talk Radio. You have to have your switchboard up and stuff like I, that just to make sure. I've been on a lot of shows, and I, I, it, it sounds fascinating. So all the different windows they have to have open. and um, I, I Good thing you're doing it because I'd be sitting there, you know, fussing around going, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Technology is not uh, my, favorite, my favorite thing sometimes. Yeah, well, sometimes it can it, it can uh, go, it can turn on you, and that, it's not always your friend. <laughs> so I think we learned that on the last show where we got cut off for I can't remember if it was my phone or if it was the internet, um, the site having a problem. I can't remember now, but there's always some kind of glitch that happens. You know, sometimes they go smooth and no no problems. Other times they have glitches. So you never know with technology. <laughs> and that's so, called life too. <laughs> you never right, know what, right. what's going to happen. Right, you just don't know what life's going to give you. How do they? Say, how does a fourth gum life like a box of chocolate? And you don't know what you're going to get out of it. So I love that movie. Uh, I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's got so many great um, lines in that one. Yeah, yeah, it was cute. So, how was your Thanksgiving? You know what? We had a fabulous Thanksgiving. I have two daughters that are seven and nine, mm-hmm. and my husband, and we went to his family for Thanksgiving, and it, it, mm-hmm. it was just a really nice Thanksgiving, a lot to be thankful for. Um, it's mm-hmm. just been um, a little cold here in Wisconsin, and today, it, when I woke up, it was a beautiful morning, and now we're supposed to get about 10 inches of snow, so my girls mm-hmm. are clamoring to get their snowsuits on and go uh, make snow angels in the snow. Wow. Oh, that should be fun. That's always a fun thing to do. I think here in the desert we make sand angels <laughs> or dirt angels. <laughs> so if you go to the mountains, yeah. yeah, I guess if we go to the mountains we can make snow angels too, but not yet. <laughs> so, yeah, that's always fun to do. So uh, that's good that you had a, a nice Thanksgiving and you know, had family nearby that you could go see. 
So uh, well, the topic today, I wasn't sure if it was going to be on the books on preparing for first grade and kindergarten. So I was looking back to see in my emails if I, if I, you know, if we discussed we, that. But I we can talk about it. any number of of topics, and you know, getting ready for schools is always a great topic, or how to get more involved in your child's education. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's at that point where a lot of schools have. Um, you know, finished up with parent-teacher conferences, and and mm -hmm. I get a lot of questions from families going, you know, this this homework every night. You know, I'm not I'm not a teacher. I don't know how to do this. What do I do? <laughs> it gets complicated. So I mean, anything, any questions that you might have, Patty, that you think your audience might be interested in hearing, or if you want me to kind of talk um, about my thoughts on education, what I would do if if I was, you know, selected as the Secretary of Education, I yeah, I could talk about any number of things. Okay. Well, let's let's kind of talk a little bit about your books since um, you, you did write them and they're nice books. <laughs> Thank <laughs> and you. I, they're, they're great resources for parents to have, especially for their preschool children um, and their kindergartners to get ready for school. And um, although it's the middle of the school year now, <laughs> Uh, I think they're still great books because a lot of people are preparing their their kids for kindergarten right now, and which we're trying to do with our four year old son. So, um, some of the skills that your book covers, if you'd like to talk a little bit about that and sure. um, why why you selected the uh, the activities that you chose. Absolutely. First off, I have to I have to backtrack a little bit. I wasn't a teacher. I wasn't an educator. I was a mom at the time when um, this idea kind of came to me through a series of Oprah shows with a neighbor, mm -hmm. and I, I was really trying to find something when my kids were three and one to kind of get them ready for kindergarten. And it wasn't mm -hmm. until I was actually talking to a neighbor friend who volunteered a lot in one of the local schools that I was even aware of how advanced kindergarten had become. Um, yeah. And and then I started, you know, I was involved in a in a real big play group, and I started talking to other moms, and we kind of all had that same theme of, you know, kindergarten's changed. It's not, you know, nap time and play time. It's really, they're really learning um, all kinds of things that, you know, mm -hmm. many of us weren't learning until we were in second or third grade, and that's mm -hmm. the kind of information that they're learning in kindergarten. So for me personally, I was trying to find a book to engage my one- and three-year-old because I felt that, you know, if I could just find a book just kind of like Goodnight Moon that, or Five Little junk Monkeys Jumping on the Bed that I read over and over every night with my kids, that by the time they got to kindergarten, they would know some of these things. So, for example, mm -hmm. when my neighbor friend was talking about position Positional words and skip counting and high frequency mm -hmm. words and sight words. I had no idea what she was talking about. I'm I'm like, what mm -hmm. what are you talking about? And she's like, mm -hmm. well, this is the new language for kindergarten. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but I don't know what a high frequency word is. And she's like, well, that's just mm -hmm. words that you, they, they use frequently. And a sight word is a word that you can't uh, break down phonetically. You just have to memorize the word. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, skip counting is counting by twos and counting by fives and counting by tens. And it's, so it's a, like a whole new language. But I felt like, you know, being a parent, I felt our teachers were talking this language just automatically assuming that we knew what they were talking about, and mm -hmm. many of my friends didn't. So really what I did is I sat down and I went, look, if I could find a, a magic book, and I tried to find it, and unfortunately uh -huh. I couldn't find it. There is no real national textbook on kindergarten, which to mm -hmm. me, honestly, Patty, I thought was kind of astounding because, you know, when our children are getting ready for school, that's the foundation of education. And if preschool mm -hmm. and kindergarten aren't a really great experience, well, you know, they might not be, you know, ready for first grade or second grade. So the foundation really needs to be preschool and kindergarten. We need to get that blueprint in front of them and get them excited and get them empowered in their own education. And the chances are if they're not involved in kindergarten, they're less likely to be involved in first grade, second grade, and beyond. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, mm -hmm. you don't just wake up one day and say, oh, let's get ready for high school. You kind of need to be involved every step of the way. Right. So my mm -hmm. whole philosophy was let's give parents kind of the cliff notes for each grade. This is mm -hmm. exactly what they're learning in kindergarten. This is exactly what they're learning in first grade, and, and so on. So let's get ready for kindergarten. I worked with teachers and parents and kids from all across the country. Um, I'm very blessed that I have a big network of friends, and honestly, mm -hmm. everybody knows a teacher. So it was really mm -hmm. easy to find teachers from all across the country that wanted to be involved in the process because, mm -hmm. honestly, 
they're the ones that knew the information that parents needed to know for kindergarten. And right. one of the things that really shocked me were the seven things that kids are tested on in the first um, the first four weeks of kindergarten. They're tested on mm-hmm. the alphabet all mixed up, so it's D, B, K, Z, F, mm-hmm. J. And they go through and they just say, what's this letter, what's this letter? And that's how kids are mm-hmm. tested. And then they're mm-hmm. also tested on numbers 0 to 10 mixed up. And, they're and that's all verbal, of course. Yes. It's all verbal, yeah. or will they visually mm-hmm. see the numbers mixed up, and then they have to say them out loud, like seven, four, mm-hmm. two, one. But you know, unless somebody's telling you this, you don't know it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they're tested on basic shapes and colors and coins, mm-hmm. counting mm-hmm. objects to ten and how far they can count to one hundred. So honestly, that first parent-teacher conference that you're going to many times the end of, you know, October, the beginning of October, that's when they're sitting down with the parents and saying, well, your child knew five of 26 letters all mixed up. And most Mm -hmm. of these parents are looking at the teachers going, well, if you would have told me (laughs) that you were going to test them on it, I would have had that information ready to know. And the problem with education is a lot of our preschool teachers are just Mm -hmm. as shocked at how advanced kindergartens become, especially because you're dealing with public schools and private schools and a preschool Mm -hmm. program that that's a lot of times a private entity that isn't tied into the district. So no one's really spreading that information out there, that, that the national voice telling parents and kids and teachers everything that they need to know. And as a huge advocate of my, my, of my own children's education, and, and I just thought, you know what, somebody needs to be saying that message. You know, why is it that, you know, as parents, mm-hmm. we're excited that they know L, M, N, O, P are five letters. <laughs> Why aren't they telling us, well, you need to mix them up now? <laughs> right. So I felt like, where's the public service announcements? Where, you know, hello, Department of mm-hmm. Education. Why aren't you, you know, getting that information out there? I mean, how long did it take me to tell you these were the seven things that you need to know? And to put that yeah. on a public service announcement would be very easy. Right, so yeah, for I sure. Decided, have they done, any, have they yeah, done anything have, like that? No. I don't know no, if I've that's, seen it here. <laughs> no, that's my whole. That's my whole. That's my whole um, platform. Like, what? Where are you people? So now I'm they actually still haven't done anything about getting something well, like that out. I, I'm I'm working really hard to um, try to talk to governors. Um, I'm working state by mm-hmm. state, and it's not. It, you'd think it'd be an easy process to do, but mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to get some reaches into the Department of Education. Um, mm-hmm. I'm start. I'm going to a lot of conferences, the Head Start conferences, the early childhood conferences and trying Mm -hmm. to meet as many people as I possibly can. And every workshop I do, I ask parents and teachers and kids to spread the message. Because my whole philosophy Mm -hmm. on education is kind of like the seatbelt law. If you teach a child that they Mm -hmm. need to wear their seatbelt, they're going to teach everybody. So, you know, I go around now, and to three- and four-year-olds, I teach them the seven things they need to know for kindergarten. And I Mm -hmm. teach them the importance of going through the backpack and the importance of, of playing repetitive games and, you know, having conversations with mom and dad that aren't yes and no, they're open-ended so that it forces kids to actually learn to communicate in long sentences. So, Mm -hmm. you know, those are the things that are the things that I do. And so my whole platform is the Let's Get Ready to Learn Mom. And now I'm talking to brands and looking for some sponsorship and hopefully Mm -hmm. getting that message out there that these are the things that um, parents need to know um, on what their kids are testing in school. So that's that's kind of my whole national platform, and I love to talk about it, and um, I love mm-hmm. to tell people, you know, spread the word that, you know, kindergarten's changed, and we need mm-hmm. to kind of take it upon ourselves to be involved. So, like the seatbelt law, if you teach a child what it is that they need to know, they will mm-hmm. teach everybody. I, I was mm-hmm. one of my favorite stories. I was doing a... Um, uh, this is my third year back at Zablocki uh, uh, Elementary School in the Milwaukee area, and Zablocki is part of the Milwaukee Public School System. And in the Milwaukee Public School System, it's a failure. Um, they their budget for Milwaukee Public Schools is a uh-huh. billion dollars. They get a billion dollars, a billion. Uh-huh. And so basically that breaks down to every child in MPS or Milwaukee Public Schools gets about $15,000 that's supposed to go towards their education. But that money is just... It is. It's very misappropriate. Misappropriated. They spend over twenty million dollars in consultants, and so the money's yeah. not getting into the classroom. And it, it's a really sad, sad situation here in Milwaukee. But um, Zablocki yeah. has been having me come in for the last three years now, and I'm very happy to say that um, this year 
um, we had a family that had had a child um, that was going into kindergarten last year and another one that was going into first grade. But the four-year-old was at these conference, or these little meetings with me, and we were going through our kindergarten book and, you know, telling kids mm-hmm. what they need to know. And here's this little three-year-old who started, you know, w- going through it when she was three mm-hmm. and then four. You know, she's yelling out the answers, you know, to a classroom of five-year-olds. And I mm-hmm. finally turned to the mom and I said, you know, how does she know all this stuff? Well, Stacy, this is her second year here with you, plus she's had your book for two years. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, it works. (laughs) You know, it it works. And so it it just was really neat. And I I do get that kind of feedback. I get um, dads that email me and say, you know, my kids, you know, go to bed with your book and they wake up and they're so proud of what they know. And and that's the beauty. I, I wrote the book in a way that, Kids will tear it right out of your hands, and they'll open a page, and they'll focus on things they know, so they'll start telling you all the colors. And, and you'll notice when you just glance at the page, you know, maybe they're not saying pink, and maybe they're not saying, you know, orange, mm-hmm. so maybe they don't know those colors, but they're saying every other every other one. <laughs> so right. it's kind of without any nonverbal, without you ever having to say, I don't know, you know, I don't know if my child knows this, if the child starts talking about the alphabet or if it skips the pages of the alphabet all mixed up, you'll know without even asking mm-hmm. a question. You'll kind of have an idea that maybe they don't know that page, and that's mm-hmm. okay, and you kind of make it fun, and at some point let's go back to that page, and, and you read it to them, and then mm-hmm. they'll read it back to you, and then eventually over time they get to know those concepts. So it, it has to be fun, and it has to be kind of like the seatbelt law. I mean, the other day I jumped in the car coming um, from the post office, and my daughter's like, Mom, you forgot to put your seatbelt on. And, you know, you feel like you're about an inch tall. You're like, yeah, yeah, when that little voice comes from the back seat of the car. But, you know, when you empower a child with, you know, let's practice counting to 100 because that's what I need to know for kindergarten. Or mm-hmm. let's, you know, work on compound words um, because that's what I need to know for first grade. You, you're you empowering them with their own education, and, and, and then they they get – they feel like when they're sitting in the classroom and the teacher says, let's work on compound words, they already feel like, oh, I knew what a compound word was before she even mentioned it. So they feel like they have a leg wow. up. Yeah, so well, that's really advanced. <laughs> it is. Well, so. it is because, you know, it, sadly, um, I, my daughters are now in second and in, in fourth grade. And mm-hmm. there's my, we were just, I, was, I did it all wrong for my second grader. We were doing uh, ballpark estimates. And I was mm-hmm. estimating it too close to to the accurate answer. <laughs> mm-hmm. So my daughter came home with all of them wrong. You know, I was I was mm-hmm. too close. Instead of doing even tens, I was doing to the fives. So mm-hmm. um, so you know, I get some stuff wrong too for my daughter's second grade math book. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it it's kind of just being involved and and working with your yeah. Teachers. Sometimes you, the the instructions in those books aren't very clear either. <laughs> Well, here, here's my biggest defense. I mean, think about it. You know, your teacher's sending this homework home with you for your, you to help your child to do. But you know what? Let's face it. I didn't go to college to be a teacher. I don't know mm-hmm. how to do this stuff. So, you know, they, there's a whole new language. I mean, some of the stuff my daughter's learning in fourth grade on electricity, I don't know that I ever learned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I did, it wasn't until I was probably in seventh or eighth grade. And, yeah. you know, now the stuff that they do on the calculators, it just by the time they get to sixth and seventh grade is a little bit beyond me. Um, now so, they're using a scientific calculator already. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So it's yeah. kind of... Um, you feel a little bit, you know, out of the process, but I guess the reason why um, I'm doing this is to kind of stay ahead of the, uh, the head of the thing, uh, uh, the head of what they're going to be learning, as well as, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not the Spanish teacher. I don't speak Spanish, but yet I want mm-hmm. my children exposed to Spanish. So now I'm releasing the bilingual version of Let's Get Ready for for Kindergarten in Spanish and mm-hmm. English. And as mm-hmm. we've been okay. writing the books, we've been learning the, the language. So that book's coming out sometime next month. So mm-hmm. it's just. Do you have audio tapes that go along with them also? We're, we're, that's, that that's teachers something we're or, or parents could make it a, lear- uh, a listening um, activity, listening center type. Yeah, that, thank you for bringing that up. That's something that I'm working on, but it probably won't be done for another six to eight months. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. we're just trying to we're we're hiring right now for the voiceover, 
and uh-huh. um, trying to you know coincide because my books are kind of books that you can technically skip pages. You don't have to read everything. It's a little harder to do the right. audio, but right. they're um, like little activity work um, workbooks in a way. I but they're you know they're wipe on. I'm not sure what you call this type of paper, uh, but they're you know write on wipe off type of yeah. book. Yep. Dry erase and, or whatever wipe off. Right on my phone. Yeah, box, I can use uh, yeah, use dry erase. So that's really you know that's a really great idea too because you know you buy workbooks or whatever for your kids and you know once they use them it's you know not reusable for you know more practice. So I you know say, this. I, is I will say with the dry erase, part of the reason I did the dry erase um, was for that benefit, but I also wanted something that I don't know about you, but my mother-in-law, I love her. <laughs> She's amazing. Mm-hmm. She always bought us the most amazing books when my kids were little. But as a parent, mm-hmm. I was horrified to try to read them to them because they weren't very durable. And, you know, everybody says to you, you got to read to your children when they're little, when they're, you know, out of mm-hmm. the womb, when you, you know, when you first have them, you should be reading to them. But honestly, you put a book in front of an 18-month-old, they're going to chew on the corners and drool all over it. Mm-hmm. And so that's mm-hmm. why I made the, the fabric and the, the, the dry erase material was so that you could take a napkin and just wipe it off. And it was a book that you wouldn't be afraid to hand to hand over to an 18-month-old. I mean, can they mm-hmm. destroy it? You know, yeah, but they have to really work at it to destroy it. Yeah. And I wanted something yeah. that you could just be a little bit more durable that was, you know, fit in their mm-hmm. size hands. So it was little. I mean, we sat in bed some nights, and these huge books where you open a page and you just about take out the other child when you're flipping the page. It's like, okay, yeah. back over. I'm going to flip the page now because our habit. Mm-hmm. Our, our nightly routine was um, talking about, you know, reading every night with our kids. And so um, they would always bring in at least ten books. And so every night I'd be going through these ten books over and over, and you know, and it, it was always kind of the same you know, 50 to 75 books that my family loves. So it was kind of fun. I'm, I'm actually posting on my blog um, our, our 25 days for Christmas and some of my our favorite 25 kids' books that we read over and over and over again, mm-hmm. like like Goodnight Moon and What Baby Wants mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. just, you know, Corduroy and just all kinds of um yeah, That sounds books. like a good list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, my oh. favorite one is um, Miss Susie. It's a book that I read when I was a kid about Susie the squirrel that lived in a treehouse. And oh, that is probably my favorite book of all time, along with Goodnight mm-hmm. Moon. So mm-hmm. um, it's at cedarvalleypublishing.com. Just go to the blog, and you can um, mm-hmm. you can see my my 25 favorite um, all time kids books. Okay, sounds good. I'll have to check it out later. And um, so, so the age group that you recommend parents start with, say, let's get ready for kindergarten and first grade. Um, what do you I, recommend? I, I, you know what, I would say, you know, 18 months is really a good age to start. Even though the book title is kind of deceptive in that it says, let's get ready for kindergarten, I think it's never too early. And really, if you treat it like a book that you read over and over and over, and you, you mm-hmm. know, just you don't have to read every word on the page. You can just kind of look at the pictures and say, okay, let's look at our body parts, or you know, left hand, right hand. Let's put our hands in there, or let's say some words. Mm-hmm. Um, I, one of my other really fun stories when I was one of the first book signings that I did for this was at a store up in Green Bay, Wisconsin, called Butterfly Books, and mm-hmm. the local, um, the local. Uh, make, um, newspaper from the Press Gazette came out to take a picture of me. And he came, he was a little late, so um, there had been a long line of people waiting. And then I kind of went through it relatively quick. And then um, there wasn't really anyone left in the store. And so he just wanted to take a picture of me. But there was a teacher in there with her f- number five, her fifth child, and he was about 18 months old. And she was a little mm-hmm. bit like, Stacey, I think these books are way too advanced. I would never give them to a child until they're ready for ki- until they're in kindergarten because these are just way mm-hmm. too advanced. And I, mm-hmm. I didn't know how to really rebut her because she's the expert. She's the educator. I'm, I'm the parent. And mm-hmm. so um, I said, that, you know, I understand that. I, this gentleman's here to take a picture. Can your son, do you think he could get in the, the page with me and, and, and we could look at the book together? So I handed him the book, and he opened up to, let's say, each word page. And on that page, is the alphabet with every every letter of the alphabet has an, an um as a, has a picture next to it so a has ant and b has mm-hmm. bat and c has cat and d has dog and he opened up to that page and he looked right at it and he pointed to, to i and he said igloo 
And I looked mm. at his mom, and I said, how old is he? And she's like, he's 18 months. And I'm like, 18 months, and he knows Igloo? No way. Wow. You know, yeah. I, I mean, of all the things on this page that he could have seen, there's a fox, and there's a goat, and there's a pig, and there's a turtle, and there's an umbrella. Uh-huh. But he, he, uh-huh. he picked Igloo, which I thought uh-huh. was the hardest word, and that, that he actually knew it. So on mm-hmm. and on and on on that page, you know, he pointed to the, it's actually rat in the book for R, and he said mouse. Well, who cares, mouse, rat? You know, he was just telling you what he knew. And for the watch, um, for W, mm-hmm. he said clock. Mm-hmm. And for V, mm-hmm. for van, he said he said truck. And mm-hmm. then he got queen, and he got pig, and he got turtle, and umbrella, and lion, and nut, mm-hmm. and octopus. He, got, he knew them all. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm just looking at her, and she said, you know, she's like looking at the book, and she's like, you know, I'm really sorry. You're absolutely right. It's never too early to start learning. I'm a teacher. I know better. I have five kids. And she said, mm-hmm. by the time the fifth one comes, you just don't even know what they even know. And she said, the way wow. you wrote this, he can tell you what he knows without you even having to ask him. Right. So that's yeah. why the kids feel empowered with it. So I would say they're never too early. Um, here's a perfect mm-hmm. example. I would have never thought that 18-month-old could say igloo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, totally. I, it just really wasn't something that I would have thought he would have said. Um, mm-hmm. Dog, cat, yeah, but not igloo. So that was kind of fun. Um, mm-hmm. So it, they're they're just never too early to start. And and you know the way I look at it is, you know you don't need to go out and buy my book. You need to just know that these are the seven things. You know practice counting to 100 with them, and mm-hmm. you know take a sheet of paper and mix up the alphabet. Take a sheet of paper and mix up numbers. You know mm-hmm. coins. Oh my gosh, the number of parents that are shocked that their kids need to know coins in kindergarten. I mean we're still worried they're going to swallow them. <laughs> no, so, that's, that's you know, true. So um, take a piece of paper and write out the coins, you know, or draw them, or, or even use real coins. Um, but mm-hmm. I'm a little nervous with that because I don't want them to swallow them. Um, mm-hmm. But they need to know penny, nickel, dime, quarter. So, yeah. And then a little idea of the value because that's a really hard concept for kids. I know when I was a kid I always thought the penny was the most valuable thing. And it, it takes a while for the kids to get over that, that actually the quarter, you know, is worth 25 cents where the pennies only worth one. All they think of is mm-hmm. pennies, the, you know, the best thing in the world, um, which pennies are right. right. Um, but, you know, it's just that concept. It takes a little bit of time. So they're never too early to start learning that concept. So, right, um, And right, I'm sure right. people have some, you know, Monopoly games with some money laying around, you know, um, or some, you know, store money that you can play with right. or the pretend money. So there's all kinds of things that we can do. And I, I think the most important thing as a parent is just to be involved. Ask, ask your child questions. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you take them to preschool, well, how was preschool today? What did you talk about? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And and make them answer you or, you mm-hmm. know, in the car, turn off the radio and, and have some conversations with your kids. Um, right. Because the best thing that we can do as parents is by the time they get to kindergarten that they can actually answer in more than a yes and no answer. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's probably the most heartbreaking thing that I've ever seen, Patty, is when I volunteered in, in some of these schools across the country, um, from mm-hmm. the very, very poor ones to the, the affluent areas as well. Um, some of these kids... You know, they just don't know how to really communicate. And mm-hmm. yes or no, and, you know, they, some of them are shy. But even yeah. after a while, the shy kids come out of their, come out of their um, shell. But it's important that they feel comfortable having conversations. And you can tell the ones, the kids that um, seem to excel are the ones that are used to having open-ended conversations with adults. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, I mean, my son's kind of on the shy side, too. That's one of the reasons we put him in preschool, and you know, we're hoping that it starts helping a little bit by the time he's ready for kindergarten because, you know, he's still, like, when we drop him off, he'll still kind of clam up a little bit and kind of look all, you know, intimidated. So we're hoping he outgrows it by the time he goes to kindergarten. Yeah. Well, I, I, just the fact that he's there, and, and by the time he does get to kindergarten, that, that will change. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. some things you can do for that. Um, one of the best things that we ever did is we used to, because I have, I have an office at home, so I work around my kid's schedule, but I have two separate mm-hmm. phone lines. And so, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I'm working in the office, and I'll call the home phone, and mm-hmm. it's me. 
And so I actually have conversations with the kids on the phone. And that mm-hmm. actually was just really fun because they think that, or sometimes we'll pull out the walkie-talkies and we'll have conversations. And they mm-hmm. just love, they love doing that. And in, in my case, it's actually really helped my business because my kids at 7 and 9 will actually answer my phone and they'll say Cedar Valley Publishing or, you know, they'll, they'll you know, you know, They'll answer a phone and they can take a message and, you know, I'm mm-hmm. shocked because um, I think it's just from being able to either hear me, you know, how mm-hmm. I mimic what I do as uh-huh. well as, you know, I give them the freedom or the luxury of being able to answer my business line. Right. Well, that's pretty pretty brave of you. <laughs> I guess they're, they're mature enough, though, for you said nine and seven. Seven. Yeah, well, so. I, I they do sometimes say, "This is Stacy's adorable daughter, Heidi," <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of funny. But you know, right. they, you can tell their kids, and they still have that kid voice. So yeah. you know, who well, better to answer a, a children's publishing company phone than a than a couple kids? So yeah. It, yeah. It's fun. Yeah, that's cute. I'm sure people don't mind. <laughs> Probably want to talk to them even. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. I mean, my kids, you know, they helped with the writings of of all the books, and they look mm-hmm. through things, and some of their um, ideas are actually in the books. And, it, you know, it's kind of a whole family project, you know. Now mm-hmm. they, you know, Heidi will be working on something, and she'll say, you know, we definitely need to do ballpark estimates in the second mm-hmm. grade book. And we, oh, Mom, make sure that we focus on this. And, you know, oh, Mom, you know, we need to have this page for this. And, and Megan, who's in second grade, will say, oh, let's let's not forget, we need to add this. And so they feel empowered, and, and their friends are empowered in the process, too, because they're the ones that help me in the editing. Because um, mm-hmm. it's better to look at a book than a bunch of kids that just went through second grade. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. they're the ones that are going to find the errors. And in fact, little Joe Barber, who's now in fourth grade, when I was writing Let's Get Ready for First Grade, he uh-huh. I went to his class and Heidi was in there, and all of the kids had been helping me write the book, and so I was all ready to go to print, and I had a little paper book in there. And I was reading the book, and I was reading it out loud, and all of a sudden Joe Barber raises his hand, and he said, Mrs. Cannonberg, Mrs. Cannonberg, there's an error. This is wrong. And I said, well, what do you mean, Joe? He said, he said um, Roosevelt is on the dime. Um, Eisenhower was on the dime in the 40s. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I looked at him, and he's uh-huh. like, well, my mom's a teacher. And I'm thinking to myself, your mom looked at this book 100 times, and she didn't catch it. So, uh-huh. you know. It, it's funny that, you know, he he loves it when newspapers actually quote that or TV stations that interview me actually quote that little Joe Barber caught this mm-hmm. big mistake before we went to print. And so, mm-hmm. you know, he always is the first one to say, Mrs. Cannonberg, how's that Spanish book coming? Mrs. Cannonberg, let me know when you need me for a second grade. I'll be happy to take a peek at that. <laughs> so <laughs> no. It's just, it's just, you know, he's he's empowered in the process and hey, you know, who better to look mm-hmm. at it than somebody that just went through it? I mean, it's been a right. long time since I was in second grade. <laughs> right. Well, that leads me to my next question. Do you have plans to do one for each grade level, at least through elementary or Exactly. Through at, least through, at least through elementary. I, I would love to mm-hmm. do, um, I'm working on let's get ready for second grade now, um, let's get ready for third grade, let's get ready for fourth grade. And I think that mm-hmm. after fourth grade, maybe a fifth grade, and then we'll see. Um, mm-hmm. I think once you get into the higher grades, it's a little hard because you've got each subject that could be its own, you know, let's get ready for math, let's get ready for, you know, fifth grade math. Or, let's, right. you know, it, it or you could do it bit. more as a social um Skill type thing, how the you know the social atmosphere changes from elementary to middle school, and you know, kind of talk about that. Oh, you, you know that's what? That's idea. a really good point because, in, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, our school um, at fourth grade is the end of elementary, so fifth grade is middle school, wow. which I think is that's too right. young. They're making kids grow up so fast. You know, that's like you know talking about how the standards are so much higher now. I think it's kind of crazy myself, and you know, I used to be an elementary teacher. And I think it's really crazy in a way that they're, you know, they expect so much from kids these days, and they don't let them be kids anymore. You know, it's, um, yeah, God, fourth grade—that's the fourth end of grade. elementary school that's now. That's the end yeah. of elementary school. Then at fifth grade, they're in they're in middle school, which is re- you're right. Yeah. It is. Re- what what grade did you teach, Patty, for elementary? Well, school? I taught from uh, kindergarten up to fifth. You know, pretty much elementary. Wow. And uh, and how long ago was that? 
Oh, let's see. I've been home now, I guess, about four years. So it's about four years ago. It has, you know, it, 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 it's it's amazing to say this, but four it, four years it has really changed. It's become even more mm-hmm. advanced. And you're right. I think I think mm-hmm. we're taking the fun out of school. I mean, yeah, I, well, I, even you know, when I was, you know, it, it just still it seems pretty overwhelming, even as a teacher, because you have to have all these portfolios and and you know keep track of you know so much more stuff than teachers before had to do. <laughs> I just thought, you know, this is getting crazy, and I was pregnant, so I just did it. Enough, enough. <laughs> I, I didn't want to deal with it anymore, and I just thought, I want to stay home with my kids and as long as I can. So we'll see if I go back. <laughs> well, I have to I'm be honest. I don't have to. I have to be honest because it's, it 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 has changed, and I, mm-hmm. I get frustrated. Uh, you know, my daughter's in fourth grade, and she gets one ten minute recess. And Aww. then you wonder why kids are overweight, you know. And yeah. like one yeah. ten minute recess, that's it for the whole day, you know. Yeah. They they need to run around, and you know you can't yeah. expect a, you know a fourth grader to be quiet all day. You know how are they going to mm-hmm. get that? How are they going to get that energy out? And you know during yeah. lunch, are they having you know ten minutes to eat? Are they really you know? I've been there. Sometimes it's chaotic. They only get ten minutes to eat. So everything's mm-hmm. so. Regiment, you know, regimented, and you're right. There's so much red tape to everything that I think that you know we've kind of lost, fat, lost, you know, lost the the fun in education. Mm-hmm. And I I think that many kids feel, especially as they get older. I mean, Heidi will turn to me, who's in fourth grade, and say, "Mom, can you mm-hmm. believe I only have one recess? It doesn't make any sense." You know, and mm-hmm. you know it's sad, but. but you know, you know. Here's the other thing she said the other day. They just finished their starting in third grade. They have those um, assessment tests for the state. They're mm-hmm. called, you know, um, you know. Here they're called the Wisconsin Early Childhood Assessment Tests. I don't know what they're mm-hmm. called elsewhere, but they're the, the yeah. national tests that start in third grade. Right. And Heidi was tested for a whole week, and you know, she comes home one day and she's like, you know, mom. This just doesn't make any sense. And I go, well, you know, what, what's up, Heidi? And she's like, you know, these assessment tests. You know, the way I learn is I take a test, I get the test back, and I know what I got wrong. So now mm-hmm. I'm taking this test, I'm taking it for a whole week, and I have no clue what the right answers are. So how am I ever supposed to learn from my mistake? Mm-hmm. You know, I may yeah. think that I got all these answers right, so the next time I see that same test next year for it, when I'm in fifth grade, I'm learning on the concepts that I thought I got right when I, when I took it for a whole week. Mm-hmm. It's like, how do you yeah. argue with that? She's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, if you're going to take a test, there has to be some sort of learning experience from the test. How do we know if we've got anything right or wrong? Mm-hmm. Right. And then how do we build from it the next year? So, you know, here's a child that's in fourth grade that makes more sense than, you know, than sadly some of our, our you know, uh, let's go to the top, the Department of Education. I want you to answer that question because how are they learning from these assessment tests and why is it that my school is taking a week-long test and in order to process that test, it's going to take our administrators like four or five weeks to do it. So basically it's six weeks' worth of time. You know, mm-hmm. in the right, and then you have to do the, the pre-testing, you know, the preparation for the testing. <laughs> Exactly. We've been so, testing ha- like half a semester, half a semester, or almost half a year. I remember with fifth grade, I was having to prepare them for the testing. So yeah, it's, it's so kind of crazy. So then you're, you're you're teaching half the year for the test, but yet you don't even know the results of. So it doesn't yeah. make any sense. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot, and I don't know. If, you know, before they just had the standardized national test, and now they have the state ones too. On top of that, exactly. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess testing is good in a way because then you know where they, you know, where they're at and where they need help. But then I don't know. It's kind of too much to me too. Well, <laughs> I'm with you. I think that testing is important because you're absolutely right. It shows where they're at. But yet, if you're mm-hmm. wasting all of that time for the test, how are they going to know where they really? You know, the teachers are going to know where they're at, but how are the kids going to learn from the testing experience? Mm-hmm. Because, for example, last year when Heidi was in third grade, she came home in tears one day from her test. And I said, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. She said, Mom, 
even and odd. I know I know it. I learned it in first grade. For goodness sakes, it's in our first grade. Let's get ready for first grade book. But all of a sudden, I got to the test, and I hadn't seen it in two years, and I blanked. And I couldn't remember the difference between even and odd, and there was like seven, qu- ten questions. I know I got them all wrong because I couldn't remember. But mm-hmm. now I can't even remember how I answered them, so I don't even know if I got them right. And so she really wanted someone to sit down with her and say, can I see the test so I can learn what I put down and what I didn't so I will never make that mistake again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that the way if I was in charge of education, I think that, that children should be heard, and I think that parents should be heard, and I think mm-hmm. teachers should be heard, and I think that there needs to be more of a way to work together with parents, teachers, and kids to be in charge of education. Right. Um, I just think it makes more sense because I, I think our administrators, sadly, I mean, let's look at MPS, Milwaukee Public Schools, a billion dollars, $15,000 mm-hmm. per student, and the money's not mm-hmm. getting in the classroom. There's a problem. Yeah. Well, that's happening in a lot of places. Uh, I know where I grew up, uh, they just try to have an override, a budget override to get more money, but, you know, they've been getting a lot of money as it is, and they just had an override, like, I think, three or four years ago, and they, now they try to pass another one, and the people didn't go for it this time because they're like, you know, you guys are mismanaging the budget. It's just, you know, it's not going where it should be going, and, you know, instead they raise um, salaries of administrators and stuff like that instead of putting it into the classroom and the kids. And, I, you know, and again, here we go back to, you know, <laughs> There's the the salaries and the benefits and the health insurance and the teachers unions and you know mm-hmm. not that that's a bad thing but in our school we've got you know ten million dollars for our budget and eighty mm-hmm. percent of that or eight million dollars goes to salaries and pensions and insurance so that leaves two million dollars out of the pool that goes to the kids and I mm-hmm. I just don't think and of that two million then you have to pay for a lunch and then you have to pay for transportation and busing and and maintenance for the school so really by the time you get to that pot. There's really nothing left over. So I just think the way that they slice up the pie is all wrong to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the budgets are messed up. And, you know, then the the charter schools came out, and they have their pros and cons to them. And then, you know, they take away a lot of the funding from the public schools that are already in place. So I kind of have mixed feelings on those, even though I've worked, you know, at charter schools before as well. And they, you know, they get extra public funding, but then, it's not, they don't get enough, and you know, because they're trying to start from scratch, really. And, you know, I, I worked in cl- kindergarten classroom, for example, that, you know, the supplies were so limited, I pretty much had to buy just about everything, including, you know, the toys to keep the kids, you know, entertained, you know, during their free time. That's, so, that's absolutely despicable, because did you hear me? They get a billion dollars. How can, how can, and I hear this over and over and over and over. Yeah. At our own school, um, there, I went to my first PTA meeting, and the art teacher said she had $500 in the budget, and she has 500 mm-hmm. kids, so to buy art, art supplies for each one of those kids, she had a dollar to spend. Mm-hmm. Well, you tell me what you can buy for a dollar per student, you know? Yeah, you can buy a bunch of crayons, but not enough for You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's kind of you, you, you buy markers that the kids use from classroom to classroom over and over and over. But, you know, it just didn't make sense. And the number of teachers that I talk to that say, oh, yeah, my supply budget for the year is $60. Well, you know, what is that going to buy? <laughs> I, so I, I get so frustrated because the money, there's something wrong when the money doesn't filter the, into the classroom because isn't that the whole reason why you're there in the first place for the kids in the classroom? Mm-hmm. No. Patty, yeah, we've got to change education. We, I hope all of our, our listeners out there can get excited and empowered because, really, we do have to change the way our kids are educated in that the money has right. to filter down. We're spending a right. lot of money in taxes to, to give our children a leg up in education, and, and, and something's wrong. This, this, right. This is well, I think that's working. why so many parents now are homeschooling, too, and that's some, an option I'm considering myself. <laughs> Um, you know, if it comes down to it, especially because I feel like the uh, new uh, administration in Washington is going to uh, to uh, change our education system in a direction I don't feel comfortable with, you know, some of those uh, community service things that they expect your kids to do when they have enough, you know, going on with school and, you know, trying to learn something and homework and all that. How are they going to have time to do 50 hours of community service when they're, in, you know, in middle school? 
I, I have to agree with you in that I'm a little nervous about the whole diversity issue. You know, I, mm-hmm. I understand diversity is important, but I don't know that I want my kids to know about, uh, you know, that I don't feel that, you know, having an um, alternative lifestyle and, and you know, some of our pop stars that are getting pregnant and, you know, drugs and alcohol, you know. Right, right. and it's all, it's all starting to, you know, end up in the classroom, you know, where they're trying to teach your kids about, you know, homosexuality. Well, maybe your parents don't want their child, you know, to be taught that at school. And, you know, it's up to the parents to kind of talk to them about things like that and, you know, some of the sex education at, in kindergarten. You know, you know, there's good tests and bad tests, but I don't know how far they're planning to take things. But, you know, stuff has been trickling down, you know, over the past 20 years or so that, you know, you didn't, you didn't even see on TV. And now you see it on TV, and now it's happening, you know, things like that are trickling into the classroom. And, I mean, it's just getting crazy. <laughs> and I have to agree with you. I think as a parent, it's your responsibility to have that conversation. It's your mm-hmm. um, privilege to um, initiate your children into different things. Um, mm-hmm. And I feel that, you know, uh, you know, even the way they teach, um, you know, the holiday Martin Luther King's, you know, birthday, you know, my kids came home and, and they were absolutely like, I can't believe this happened, which history is important. We do need to teach our kids that, but I almost mm-hmm. think that, you know, it's almost like I always tease my kids and say, if I was going to go take a shower and told you don't touch the marshmallows on the third shelf of the pantry, I'll be back in 10 minutes, but whatever you do, don't touch the marshmallows, don't touch the marshmallows, I know dang well if I go take a shower, they because mm-hmm. I said don't touch the marshmallows, they're going to go over and touch the marshmallows. It's kind of like, you know, the fact that my kids don't look at color, and now the fact that they're bringing it in a way, the way they're teaching it is almost, you know, making it look like color. And and my kids are like, I don't understand. You know, we're making more of a big deal out of it now. You're t- you're teaching us something that was really bad. Why did you have to teach us something that was really bad? Why couldn't we, you know, not thought about color? But yet, mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're right. We need to teach the past. And, you know, our country made some horrific mistakes. But mm-hmm. I just think sometimes we're doing it too early when they're still in the innocence of right. they're not thinking of the negative. Um, right. Case in point, and, and I do a lot of... some kids are so impressionable that, you know, it just they start to think it's, so, you know, like, like the homosexuality thing I was talking about. <laughs> You know that you know they start thinking that that's okay and it's a lifestyle that oh you can just choose to do that. Well, you and know. you're right. I and and I'm I'm of the firm belief that you know my children are my responsibility and you know mm-hmm. I I have some ideas for them and and some dreams and goals for them and I want to be the one that explains mm-hmm. to them this and. Case in point, you know, I do a lot of TV, I do a lot of radio, and Mm -hmm. a lot of times when my kids, I don't even let them watch me live on TV anymore because I don't know what the commercials are. So I come home, Mm -hmm. my kids are in tears going, Mommy, Mommy, did you see that that guy? He, he, uh, he, He... chopped up some lady and he put her in a in a stove on Halloween and cooked her. You know, it's like, oh, oh yeah, that was a top story for the news. Yeah, I forgot. My kids are watching this. You know, it's kind of like I'm not a big fan. I love books, but I'm not a big fan of the Junie B. Jones books because I don't like the way she talks. And she talks like, uh-huh. my, that mean Grace, that mean Grace, she was so mean, I just wanted to kick her, that mean Grace. You know, oh, and Junie uh-huh. B. Jones is talking about her friends. Well, you know what? What am I now saying to my kids? If, you know, now, my daughter's going to think because, you know, Jeannie B. Jones says that mean Grace, I'm sure, you know, Megan's going to say that mean Molly or that mean, you know, Bridget or that mean, you know. So it's almost like you're giving it, – it's okay now. <laughs> right. It's almost like it's okay because you told them now it's okay. So I, I guess I like to keep them in innocence a little bit longer and then expose them when they're a little bit older where they have right. more of the capacity to learn this stuff. And you know what? I've right. mentored a lot of people into, you know, what do I do? Do I do pot, private? Do I do public? Do I do parochial? Do I homeschool? Mm-hmm. And I always mm-hmm. come back to you got to try a little bit of everything. And if you're really right. thinking about homeschooling, you know, try mm-hmm. for a couple of days when they're four and see if you like mm-hmm. it. And then make the rounds. I mean, my husband, bless him, you know, he came with me to um, each of the schools. We had appointments mm-hmm. set up, and I brought both kids with me. And we sat down as a family. And if you had told me that we were going to pick the public school that was three minutes from my house, I would have Mm -hmm. never believed you. Um, Mm -hmm. My husband went to a parochial school that's 20 minutes away, and that's where I thought his heart was going to be, and I thought it was going to be a big battle to 
to get them to at least go within seven to ten minutes away from home. Um, mm-hmm. But really, it was just a matter of what school did we feel the most welcome and what school did we feel like we knew the most more people and we felt a connection with. And, you know, it, you kind of have to go to get to know your school. And, you know, I'm I'm a big advocate in my school, in the PTA, and I attend school board meetings, and yeah. I bring up subjects that people don't want to talk about. And, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, tell me why I should vote for this referendum. You know, tell uh-huh. me why the money's not trickling down. I want to know why we You're have right. the administrators. Can somebody explain yeah. to me why we've got, you know, so I'm the one that asks the hard question, and I'm the one that's mm-hmm. at the meetings in everybody's face. And, you know, the teachers either love me or they hate me, depending on what they need mm-hmm. from me. Yeah, so, depending you know, on what they support. <laughs> and then yeah. it's funny because the superintendent will, you know, it's kind of like she doesn't even ask Stacy who anymore. Oh, it's Stacy line two, and he's probably like, oh, not her again. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I, as a parent, I think you're doing your children the best service in the world by being involved. And mm-hmm. you know, and just right. Whether you're part doing the community. teaching at home or or they're going to a public or private school, you have to be involved. And you know, PTA is definitely a great place to start. <laughs> you know, and if you're trying to decide if you want to join a school, you go sit uh-huh. in a PTA meeting before your kids are that age, because then yeah. you're going to get to know the decision makers or the people that are kind of leading the effort to change your school. And I'll be honest, when I um, joined our school. The PTA was like 15 members, and and it wasn't a, a a very friendly PTA. I mean, I just didn't feel like, oh gosh, I felt like I was on the outside, and and it was just kind of not a, a real fun place to be. And I think just because they'd been doing it so long, I think they were sick of being the only 15 people to ever show up and do things for our school. Uh-huh. And we had a new election, and um, we brought in some new people, and. Um, now our PTA is up to 70 members, and it's wow. so much fun. I mean, it has become a social event at our school. Every PTA mm-hmm. function, you know, people just love it. We have so much fun. We get together a lot. And our kids are always invited to all the PTA meetings. So it became kind of like the kids are the reason why it got so big, because, like, mm-hmm. my kids would go tell their friends, that, oh, we're going to pay at 630 in the gym. And, well, what are you going to Well, it's PTA. You know, they bring snacks. We can play in the gym. They have babysitters. and So it's a social event so we would see parents being drug in and dropped off at the library where the kids went and played and and then they just Mm kind of stayed so um it just really worked for us that way and i highly recommend um i'm a big fan of homeschooling um one of our pta vice presidents this year decided to homeschool it's her first year so she's got a fifth grader and a fourth grader that she's homeschooling so um it's just, it, it works great. She's still a part of the community, and um, mm-hmm. we're still really great friends, and I've been able to help her and share all my homeschooling resources with her. So it's uh-huh. just building your community, doing what works really great for your family, and, and right. making it fun. Right. And that's, you know, for me right now, I kind of feel like, like I said, my son's kind of on the shy side, so I wanted to get him in preschool, and hopefully that will help develop some of the social anxiety that he has or whatever it is that, you know, because he's been home pretty much with me. And, you know, we did do play groups in the beginning, but then kind of took a break from that, I guess you could say. <laughs> well, it's hard when you have 20 kids coming over to your house and then it takes you three days to clean up the mess. <laughs> yeah, right. Or, you know, you have to drive across town and, you know, by the time you get there, they're napping or or by the time you get back, you're ready for a nap, but then the baby's not. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of had to take a break from those. <laughs> you know, there's so, some other thoughts, too. You, if you get into one of those homeschooling communities, too, I mean, you know, just check out in the area. You'll you'll know who's doing it. Go online. You've got those resources, Patty. You know how to find those people. But you can also trade mm-hmm. off. I mean, if there's another homeschooling mom with a four-year-old, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. by sending them over to them, you know, and vice mm-hmm. versa, just for the social aspect um, mm-hmm. That's great too. I mean, we yeah. we had some friends that they've always homeschooled. They've never been to um, a public or a private school, and mm-hmm. they were always they were so active. They were always at the zoo, and they're always around mm-hmm. people. And um, mm-hmm. and these kids, you know, were relatively shy. Um, mm-hmm. But I think sometimes even, you know, we've got friends that have really really desperately shy kids that are in public schools and and it's actually taken her until she's in fourth grade to really come out of her shell 
So right. it's right. funny. It's funny. Each kid's different, and mm-hmm. you know, you know your kid better than anybody. But one one of the things that I will say is, because I volunteer a lot in school, the minute you know. I, Kindergarten, my favorite um, time to volunteer is that first week. I'll mm-hmm. be in the kindergarten classroom, even though my kids aren't in kindergarten anymore. But these mm-hmm. parents will drop them off at the door, and the kids will just scream and the whole separation anxiety. Mm-hmm. Mom's not yeah. even around the corner, and the kid's fine. I mean, they just yeah. they know your number. Um, so it's right. fun to kind of volunteer in the classroom and kind of see, you know what, there's so many kids, even my own kids, I was, I was actually really shocked at how much more vocal they were than what I thought they were or maybe mm-hmm. the other one was a little quieter than I thought she's usually a little bit more vocal so now it's fun I, I volunteer a lot at our school so I'm there at least once a month and mm-hmm. sometimes I'm in my children's classrooms or other times I'm not or I'm across the hall from them or we're in events where they're there as well so I get to see them and kind of see how they mm-hmm. interact with other people so that's mm-hmm. kind of fun right yeah it's good to you know for them to see your face there and <laughs> Get familiar well, with the teacher and the atmosphere. Well, so, and you know yeah. this. You know this from your teaching days. If you're worried about your child being bullied in school, the simplest solution mm-hmm. is to be involved. Because if everybody in your child's grade knows you and knows your name, you know, and, and they call me Mrs. K or Mrs. Cannonberg, mm-hmm. th- these are the kids that are less likely to to pick on your child. I mean, mm-hmm. I, there's statistics show that a child's not going to bully your child if they know your name. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Because they know you can walk up to them and say, um, you know, they're they're afraid of that, you know. So because I'm visible at school, I mean, and Heidi went through a little bullying phase last year in third grade, which I was a little shocked about. And I said, well, do you want me to get involved? She's like, no, I want to handle this myself. And, and she did. Mm-hmm. I was really proud of her. And she mm-hmm. just turned around and um, ended up blowing up at this this little boy that had been bullying her and now they're really really good friends so Mm -hmm. it just kind of um she wanted to handle it on her own and um you know i teach my children if kids are being naughty that you have to say you're being really mean (laughs) you know why are you being so mean you know and just asking it back ask a question back to them you know and that's not really nice why are you being so mean and then Mm -hmm. stop and see what they say well gosh that wasn't really nice why you know, or, you know, why did you push me? That wasn't really nice. Why? You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of putting it back on them and, you know, and if they don't answer, then you just kind of, well, I really wouldn't, I would like it more if you were nicer. I'd like to play with you more if you're nicer, but mm-hmm. don't be mean. That's just not nice. And, you know, just kind of, you know, treat it as simple and not make right. a big deal out of it rather than running and tattling, tattling you know, let's turn it around and ask them directly because they're less likely. I mean, if you put them on the spot, you almost mm-hmm. have the power, so it kind of takes the diffuses the bully, in essence. Right. Yeah, and that's important that they have to, you know, kind of learn to fight their battles without actually fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good problem solving, I guess you could call it. Um, I know they came out with a lot of those uh, programs on uh, problem solving, and I can't think of what the name of them are now, but you know, it puts the kids more in control of trying to. Uh, is it some type of mediation? I can't think of the name of them now. My brain's getting <laughs> getting uh, overtired, I think. So uh, I was up late last night. So uh, let me see. Um, I, what I I do want to you know go ahead and start winding down because we are over going over, and uh, oh, my husband's probably wondering wondering when I'm going to finish up. <laughs> but but yeah, I've enjoyed talking with you. So it's, it's you know it's nice you know being able to share all this uh, this discussion with you. But, um, I mean, yeah, so I want to kind of wind down a little bit and um, just kind of mention a little bit about some of the other topics that you are available for, and maybe we can, you know, hopefully get into that at another time. And uh, you, you um, also talk about how uh, helping mothers uh, do it all or take, you know, handle it all. Exactly. Finding their passion, how they can, you know, do it all as far as balancing being a mother, um, whatever, and finding their passion and being a mother. I mean, I kind of lost myself when I became a mom, so I I, I love talking about how I found my passion and how it's made me a better mom. And Mm -hmm. because I'm busy, I I talk to a lot of other mom entrepreneurs that are trying to juggle Mm -hmm. family and business and online Mm -hmm. social networking and how do you Mm -hmm. do it all. And so I talk about that. Yeah, that's something I'm definitely interested in learning more about (laughs) from you. 
Um, so if you ever want to, you know, talk about that or, or do a, you know, a guest post, blog post on that, I think we kind of talked a little bit about having you do that at some point. Sure, um, I would definitely love to. I'd love to either come yeah. back or I could do a blog post for you. You just let me know. And if your yeah. listeners want to contact me directly, too, they can do that. You can find me at, at cedarvalleypublishing.com. It's Stacy. Okay. S T A C E Y at Cedar Valley Publishing dot com or I'm on your mm-hmm. network as well. Um I think my I'm Stacy Cannenberg or Stacy Can on your site. Um yeah. I, I love to talk. Be be a friend. Um you can find me on Twitter. I'm Stacy Can on Twitter. Um oh, okay. just, you know, just find me and friend me and, and ask me a question and I, I love to Stacey share. Stacy Can with K A N like in your name K-A- or uh, hey, I'm glad you asked that. It's Stacy S T A C E Y Can K A N N. Stacy Can. Okay at twitter.com okay. or you can find me just on my site um, or you can mm-hmm. google let's get ready for kindergarten or let's get ready for first grade and you can find okay. me through that way as well okay and then yeah i have your card here that you also do um something for mom central mom central yes. actually stacy debroff is the original founder of mom central i'm a consultant for stacy and i i deal with uh-huh. brands i work with about oh gosh hundreds hundred different brands, and I also work with mom entrepreneurs through um, Mother mm-hmm. Talk, where we help brands and moms reach mom in a real authentic voice, um, mm-hmm. just kind of helping um, companies learn how to talk to moms um, mm-hmm. so that we um, can reach them in a way that's you know, makes sense. And it's it's not about buy, buy, buy me. It's more about, you know, tips and content and um, mm-hmm. reaching mom in a new way. Because let's face it, we kind of tune out those flashy ads. I, I don't even see ads anymore. <laughs> I can be looking right, right at the TV and have no clue what just yeah. came on. So oh, talk that to sounds me great. Yeah, I was checking help. out the application for that myself, thinking, hmm, I might have to check into that. <laughs> Definitely. Sign up for momcentral.com. They've got some great surveys. You can win, you know, mm-hmm. get get some great products to try. And they're always looking for great feedback because we like to show uh, back to the brands that, you know, moms mm-hmm. really know your product almost better than you do. <laughs> you know, right, and they're the, we're the ones buying it and using it and right. kid testing it. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so we're your right. test market. So. Right. So, yeah, I'll have to check into that then. Definitely. Um, myself so and any other moms. Things. All kinds yeah, of different so things you're, we can talk about. Yeah, I know you have so much to talk about. We could go on forever, but we'll definitely have to have you back on. Um, I'm not Thank doing you. anything for December. I'm actually going to take a break myself just to kind of. Well, you should. You, know. you got a four year old. Christmas is coming. Ho, yeah. ho, ho. Right, right. And just kind of, you know, I'm going to, I'm trying to figure other ways of doing the show as well, um, possibly doing some blogging um, with which you know, is, video. Which so. I think would be really good. Yeah, yep. I mean, there's just so many other options out there so I gotta I have to kind of regroup I guess <laughs> and uh, and uh, see what else I, I should be doing and you know get the word out there but yeah I'm on Twitter as well at Little Bites News and I, I enjoy think I friended you I'm, I'll, I'll double check that I, I'm pretty sure I friended you because I saw that oh did you yeah I'll have to I, I don't know if you I don't know I, I have I quite a few up. followers now and I'm, I'm really you know grateful for it because I've been learning so much from a lot of you know moms and online gurus and you know just all kinds of different people on there it's really really a great resource to get on I, and I mean, get your I'm, get your news and information all in one place you know really quick <laughs> I love it because we don't have time yeah. and it's all about you know 140 characters you know yeah right there. Right, so yeah, if you're a mom, you should be on Twitter. Uh, yeah. to get lots of information and resources for moms, and you know, if you're trying to work from home, there's network you know, gurus that know what they're doing and offer a lot of advice for free, <laughs> you know, here and there. But you just, you know, you learn a lot from from the people you follow and who follow you. So it's really a great resource. Somebody had and a good I, idea. I, I definitely, and I'm also a fan of um, the blogs. I, I'm on your blog role, so okay. I get an update from you whenever you write. And you've got, I just, I love to see that. I love, you know, the headlines capture me, and um, uh-huh. it's great. So yeah, yeah, yeah I kind of took a break, I think, last month a little bit because <laughs> I was, I was being uh, over involved with election stuff. So now I'm kind of getting back into my routine again, and now I'm getting ready to take another break though <laughs> for December. But I'm going to try to keep the blog going at least. It's so hard sometimes, you know, to keep everything consistent when you have a family and everything else to juggle. So that's why I'm really interested in talking to you about how you do it all because, I mean, you're doing a lot. So. Well, you know, it's funny. 
and I can answer that question in, in, in a 30-second soundbite right here. Here it is. You know what? Find what you like to do and do a lot of it, and the stuff you don't like to do, do a little of it. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of, you know, I love to be on Twitter, but, you know, I don't yeah. spend – I'm not one of those people that's on there for hours and hours and hours. You know, I, I'm probably mm-hmm. on Twitter, you know, a few times a day for maybe 15 mm-hmm. minutes. And, yeah, see, that's um, my problem. I started out like that, but now I'm kind of getting addicted to it. I think it's <laughs> probably time to, to uh, just set it down. I mean, I try to, you know, I put it in the pause where, you know, I use Twirl to get on it. I like that application. It's one of the easiest ones to use to, you don't have to log into the site and all that. And, uh, you know, you can put it on pause so you don't see any tweets pop up and all that. <laughs> so, yeah, because yeah. the minute you see the tweet, then you're on it. <laughs> yeah, right. And so if I see it and it looks interesting, then I'm then I'm then I'm sucked in. So I have to pause it sometimes, but it's hard. And and then I was using a, a timer on my computer for a while there, you know, to make myself force myself to take breaks. But I don't know, it's hard. <laughs> well, and the difference between you and I, I mean, my kids are in school full time, and you know. Mm-hmm. So I have that that hour. I, I'm I'm the bus. I drop them off in the morning at 8:30, and then I pick them up at 3:30, and then right. I can still come home because they know the routine. You know, 3:30, mm-hmm. they're you know in the door. They've got things they want to do, and they're working on their homework. Mm-hmm. And you know, I can mm-hmm. still be in the office. You know, making a couple conference calls, and and oh, then we get supper together. And so we've got a routine. And then they're in bed at you know by the time they go to bed at 8:30, I'm back. I'm back on. Mm-hmm. You know, four yeah. years. Yeah. You're still. You don't have that that same luxury that I do at this point. Um, it's only right. getting easier depending on what you decide to do. So. Right. Well, and thankfully, my husband's been pretty supportive, although he's sometimes getting over the edge. I think, <laughs> saying that I'm pushing it a little bit too much. But he does really good. He helps a lot with them. You know, whenever he's around, and and actually, right now he's been between jobs, so it's been helping a, a whole lot. <laughs> so that that maybe, rock. Yeah, and so now he's just kind of like, okay, you're, you're uh, taking advantage of me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, listen, I've enjoyed our talk again, and if there's yeah, anything nice I can do, my, my phone is always open, so if you want to talk offline, you know, about some other ideas, I'd be happy to help in any way I can. Okay, well, I, I know you have a lot going on, but, you know, anytime you have time, you, you're welcome to do guest blog posts, and I'm having them... Uh, go into Twitter now and feeding them into Twitter. With that. Fabulous. Yeah, so anytime you want to do that, I'm feeding them from the Mama's Time Out site and the Little Bites News blog so that they get added exposure. And uh, I think it, you know, it's more beneficial that way for everybody involved. You know, parents get more information that way and you know, something I like to do. <laughs> Patty, you're Very amazing. Sure. You are amazing. Yeah. So thank you. Well, I'm you trying. That you do. Yeah, well, I'm thankful you're, for you you're this Thanksgiving you're a super weekend. mom, though. What uh, was that? <laughs> I said I'm thankful for you this Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, but I have to say I'm I'm uh, thankful for you for being here, and and you're the super mom that I'm you know I'm looking forward to learning more from. <laughs> hey, the the phone's always open, so uh, together we can do this. What you know, one person at a time, make the world a better place, and and help mm-hmm. us all get a little bit more educated. With whatever yeah, we want to yeah. go with, whatever we want to do. So, yeah. as my husband well, always says, doing it longer than me, so I definitely need to learn some <laughs> tricks. My husband always <laughs> says, the dream is clear, to believe is the reward. So, whatever your dream is, you know, figure out, mm-hmm. you know, how you want to do it, and the and to believe is the reward. Right. Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds like a good um, quote. So I'll have to keep that in mind. But I appreciate you being here, Stacy, and um, taking up some of your Sunday afternoon with me. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your your, uh, turkey weekend, (laughs) turkey leftovers. (laughs) Thank you. All right. Well, I'll talk to you again soon, and uh, hopefully uh, in the new year we'll schedule you again. Sounds like a plan. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Patty. Okay. Thanks a lot, Stacey. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay. So I was going to go ahead and... um, here are a few other resources, but since we ran a little over time, which was great, um, Stacey always has a lot to share, and she's definitely a great speaker, as you can tell. She likes to talk, and that's great because she has lots of information to share. And like I said, I'm looking forward to talking to her again in the new year and learning some more tips from her about balancing it all as a mom and, and uh, having your own business and 
having kids at home. So see where she started and how she uh, got to where she is today. So I'll uh, share some resource links with you on uh, the topic of preparing your uh, kindergartner and first grader for school later in the week on the littlebitesnews.blogspot.com blog. And uh, there's, lots, there's a few new articles up there I hope you'll take a look at and comment on. And the latest one is um, a list of the top 10 Twitter people you should follow, especially if you're a mother, a parent, or someone who um, works from home or wants to work from home. Because I share some of the top 10 people that I follow. And of course, there's many more, so I hope to add to the list later on. So thank you again for listening. And we'll see you in the new year. This is actually our uh, one-year show. Um, we started last November in 2007 with a uh, brief show just to kind of get things up and running and see how Blog Talk Radio worked and how to work everything. And uh, here we are a year later. And like I was telling Stacy, I'm going to do some regrouping and figure other ways to um, reproduce the show. And uh, you know, like I mentioned, blogging and possibly combining the two, or just you know doing both. So uh, kind of check into that, and uh, take some time for family and, and preparing for Christmas and, and the new year. And uh, I hope that you guys all have a safe and happy Christmas and uh, new year. And we'll talk to you again in January. Uh, I believe I'll schedule myself here. Schedule the show back again around, oh, let's say the 11th uh, of January most likely uh, so that we get through the first week of the new year. So uh, and catch up with everybody. And then I hope, you know, between the show, doing the show bi-weekly and maybe a blog in between shows would be um, the idea I'm thinking of doing. So um, keep Keep up to date on everything through the blog at littlebitesnews.blogspot.com. Thank you again for listening, and thank you again to all our listeners and future listeners, and to our special guest, Stacey Cannonberg of cedarvalleypublishing.com for joining us today. I look forward to talking to you all again soon. Make sure you bookmark us, sign up for our reminders for upcoming airtimes, send comments, suggestions through our listener line at 602-457-2761. Or you can leave a message here in the comment section and make sure you mark us as a favorite so that our show can be seen and heard by more people. And uh, the voice, the uh, caller suggestion line will be changing most likely in January as well. So I'll share that new information on the blog as soon as I get the new number for that. So um, just make sure you check the blog to keep up to date on the latest Little Bites news. Okay, and feel free to uh, contact me if you have any um, topic ideas, suggestions at admin at mamastimeout.com or at the mamastimeout.com site. You can go to the contact button and we'll uh, look forward to hearing from you and hearing your suggestions and ideas or if you'd like to be a future guest, let me know and I'll send you information on what what I need for that. And uh, have a great uh, end of the week and uh, end of the weekend, I should say, and talk to you in 2009.